Hi, and welcome to Paper Root Scrapbooking. I'm Nadine, and today I'm sharing with you the layouts that I made during the month of January 2022. Okay, so here is what I came up with in 2022. Um, I got more done actually than I thought I was going to because I don't think I scrapbooked a page until much later in January. Um, but this uh, first layout here is one from uh, a class I took with Jennifer Edwardson, Creative Inc. And she does a use your own product class where she teaches five of her sketches in two different ways. And we get some layouts done together. So I will link that workshop below if you're interested. She does one five layout workshop every month. And so it's really 10 layouts because you, I only did the five, but if you want to go through and do it twice, you can. She does it in two different ways. So here is um, the first layout. I used some old product from, um, I think this one was from Echo Park. Not this sheet, but the other stuff and I had just paired it all together. Um, yeah, and I did a grid of four. I think hers was different or smaller somehow, but I used four photos and I'm working my way through um, Quentin's photos. And then this one is another one page layout from that same workshop and it used some six by six papers, which I really liked and um, got some little embellishment clusters on there from, and these papers are actually from a 12 by 12 paper pad that I tore down a while ago. And it had some, some of those like quad sheets that I had just cut down to six by six papers. Yeah, so there's that one. Um, and then here we have, uh, I think this one was a simple stories collection. Uh, a Father's Day collection from a while ago and it has uh, just some nice colors and so I did that what used that collection for this uh, layout of Quentin and his daddy and then we have this is a printable from Father's Day from Jennifer Edwardson um, it was there was a challenge uh, during the class to use some of her printables and this was one of the free printables from a Father's Day printable sheet last year, or maybe even two years ago, I'm not sure. So I will have her website linked below and you can check out, she has some free digital products on there. This is another one, uh, I don't know, I don't think this one's free though, I think I paid for that one. That's a, she has a whole sheet of journaling bits, so I used one of those as well. Um, this one is another one from that same workshop and I think the sketch was this way but my photos were vertical so I twisted the sketch and these were photos in the video or in the class but I didn't have four photos so I just used these cute little stickers. This is an old close to my heart collection that I'm almost finished with but I just wanted to get some more of it into my albums. It's so cute. It's got like a little animal theme. So I got that one done. And this one, I do love this Bow Bunny collection. I still have a ton of this. It's a little monster collection. So I got a two pager in there. So this was the final layout from that workshop is a two page layout. And um, she does a lot of border punching with her layouts, but I did, this is like a, a chevron sheet, and I just cut out two of the same color chevron to stretch across my page instead of using a border punch. Um, I This is an old rub-on alpha. Do I still have it out? It's like really old, let me see. I think it's from Doodlebug. Uh, yep, Doodlebug, Bumblebee all mixed up layout or rub-ons and they're from 2004 and they went on like butter. I was so surprised. I'm like, will these even work? Because I found them at the bottom of a sticker box and I was like, hmm. But yeah, they worked perfect. So that was cool. 
And then I got some interesting little puffy stickers on there from Close to My Heart. A few Vicky Booten puffy stickers. Some eyeballs from that same puffy sticker sheet I added on there. They're so funny. And then, um, what else did I put on here? Some enamel stars from Tailored Expressions. Yeah. So, again, old product. I think this collection was from like 2014 maybe. Um, this is, uh, let's see, where did I get these ideas from? So that was it for my UYOP class workshop, whatever you want to call it. This one, I think I decided to do um, the 444 series from RTS because the little, um, I had made this kit for that and I had four layouts to do. And when I picked this, it was this collection. It's not even a collection. It's like a, a, a kit I put together based on the, um, it was like a punch out sheet from Crate Paper. And so it, a die cut pack, I guess, is what you would call it today. But back then it was like from a punch out sheet. And I had that punch out sheet and I had matched it with a bunch of papers that um, were not Crate Paper. So like this is Creative Memories. I think the green one was Crate Paper. I think this was from an old paper pad. And then I threw some cardstock in there. I also had thrown in these chipboard pieces and I tried something new on this one. I tried putting Nouveau drops on the tires to make them kind of look different, but I'm not really pleased with the effect, so I probably won't do that again, but I tried something new. Um, these little stars, uh, the wood stars and the acrylic stars, are from close to my heart and I tossed those in with or pulled those out to add to my layouts for this because I didn't have anything like small just the big cutout sheets these puffy stickers were sitting next to my desk and they are I think they were from Michaels but they were so old that I had to add glue I don't know if, do you always add glue to puffy stickers I don't know I don't use them enough to know but I had to add glue to those ones um, this is another one from the 444 series and I just went through Janet's um, very first 444 series because I hadn't I think I've only done one of her 444s and I know I didn't do the first one so I went through that one and followed along and this is the second layout I came up with I also pulled out this font to go with these photos because I have like several sheets of it it's really old this is from Provo Craft from I don't think there's a date on it even but as you can see it's like old style right so I had like one two three four sheets of it and so as you can see it's like starting to get used up on the front this one's still pretty good but I have like a lot of alphas on the back like on the lowercase so I pulled those out and got some on to some pages and so that was good because of course because I put this collection together it didn't have an alpha with it so I just added this in here and it was good to go these are some more of those close to my heart acrylic and wood pieces I did some outlining with a black pen to pull in the black from the alpha um, same with here this was just like a punch out frame from that sheet so this was a tab punched out from the sheet that I put the top up here and the bottom down here. This was a punched out frame and this was a punched out border strip from that sheet. And then I, instead of going with enamel dots for these ones, I pulled out a little um, thing of brads and just used the brads from that one container for all my layouts just to keep things streamlined and straightforward. This is another one from the 444. This was my third layout. The white acrylic pieces and the wood stars are again from the Close to My Heart stuff that I pulled out. And the uh, um, brads are from that little container. There is, I had some tiny scraps, so I punched some circles and put the wood pieces on top of them. Then I had, let's see, where do I have this? 
tab is from the punch out sheet, this square is from the punch out sheet, this border strip is from the punch out sheet, and this tag was from the punch out sheet. And so I matted the tag on black to go with my um, frames of my layout and my photos, and I added a heart here. There we go. And this was the last layout from the 444, and I, um, the tag was from the punch out sheet, the yellow circle was from the punch out sheet, and the tab here was from the punch out sheet, and so was this border strip. Um, here's another one of those chipboard pieces that I added into the, into the kit, and this time I just inked it in black. I used um, VersaFine black ink and inked the just to make it kind of like a shadow instead. And then I added some more acrylic pieces from close to my heart and some brads. And then I had, I have next to my desk, I have some of these little word strips and stuff. So I just pulled those out to add a little, to bring the like white, stark white from the um, journaling block around the page. I pulled out some of those. Oh, and this favorite toys is a separate punch out that I just added on top of the tag. So there's that one. And then at the end of the 4 for 4 series, I guess in the beginning, I don't know if she still does this, but she does cards. So uh, I did have some leftovers that I didn't want to just toss out, especially like this piece from the punch out sheet. And so I grabbed a few small scraps. I have a drawer full of like small scraps, three by four, all the way up to six by eight. And they, I had enough to make some, so like this was already in the kit, this yellow, and this green was already in the kit, but the, this yellow, this red, I pulled from my scrap bin. And then I also pulled some dark blue cardstock from my scraps to just make like borders around my cards because that's how I like them to look. That wasn't part of the class, that was just a personal preference. And then I had done this layout this layout with that Father's Day collection. And so um, even though this this was not a Father's Day layout, this I think the date on here is May 11th or something, but um, of course, number one dad can be any time of the year. But I knew it was a Father's Day collection. It had recently just been on my desk. And so I knew it kind of matched with this, um, this collection. And so I made some little Father's Day cards. That should be enough for my husband, my son, and my two, my dad and my father-in-law. So there's those, so four cards. And then um, after I was done that, I moved on to an old class kit from, uh, now I didn't go, I didn't get this class kit originally from Crop and Create from SCT Magazine. I got it at a garage sale for a couple bucks but it came with the full color instructions and uh, links to the YouTube videos. So watch out for those kind of things when you're shopping because there was a lot of great information in here and it was missing a couple of sheets of paper. It didn't have all the paper. The person who had owned it before me had obviously taken a few things out of it, but didn't make the layouts because every layout in here um, had uh, what I needed for it. So anyway, so I did those, um, including, did I do the back one? I think I even did this, but two of them I had already done. And then of course it sat on my wire rack, like we've talked about. And so this is one of those partly finished classes that I'm trying to get through. So this is one layout, another double page. And the thing I loved about this was the stamping. So I don't stamp on my layouts very often, but I did get a mm, Memory Misty, so the full 12 by 12 size. And this was so easy, because I just, I stuck them down, I closed the platform lid, I pulled it back up, I inked those three, I pulled it back down, and voila, I had a stamped border. It turned out really cute. These are also stamped onto just patterned paper and cut out. Uh, this is stamped onto pattern paper. These feathers are stamped onto pattern paper and cut out. So 
I did some stamping. Unfortunately, the memory Misty can make me stamp really pretty, but it can't stop me from being a total klutz. Can you see where I dropped my ink pad on, on my layout? So, you know, it fixes my stamping issues, but not my clumsiness. Uh, and this one is documenting Amelia's first trip on the transit system. Um, they live uh, a ways from Toronto, but they prefer to take the transit when they are in the city. And of course, because of the pandemic, they haven't really been on the transit system in a while. So um, she's, what, 10 months in these photos? And so that was her first time. They went to a Christmas festival. So here is the, the layout from that. And this one actually um, is one of the ones that came with a, with a video. So that was good. So there's that one. And then this was my last one for January and it has uh, just documenting a trip to the farm in the fall that they took. And this will go, this will be Quentin specific because it's about how he loves visiting the animals. Um, so that was the, the last sketch on the back of here that I just wanted to use up some more of the supplies for this one. Um, I, there's still a little bit of paper and quite a bit of product like tags and stickers and stuff. So I might try to get one or two more layouts out of this uh, before I put it away but we shall see. Um, there's not a ton of paper, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just disperse the um, like stickers and things, put them away, but we will see. I have to have a closer look at it, make a decision. But I know that there are some sketches up on the, I think it was on the mini kit Monday, or maybe counterfeit kits. Anyways, a couple of sketches that I thought would be fun to do with a few scraps, so maybe this will be where I implement that. So, in case you were not counting, that was two double page layouts, 10 single page layouts for a total of 12 layouts this month, and four cards. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button to give me a thumbs up. I will have links to Jennifer Edwardson's website, as well as the playlist for 444 at RTS linked down below. And if you would like to see more of my videos, it would make my day to have you as a subscriber. So just click the subscribe button and be sure to hit that notification bell if you would like to be notified when a new video goes up. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.